लाइव सुरू झालेला आहे सर तुम्ही सुरू करू शकता मी तुम्हाला अनम्यूट करते आर डी जोशी सर ओव्हर टू यू मॅडम आपले पार्टिसिपंट किती जॉईन झाले ऑलमोस्ट इथे फोर्टी सिक्स्टी फोर सिक्स्टी सिक्स्टी फाईव्ह सिक्स्टी फाईव्ह सिक्स्टी फाईव्ह पार्टिसिपंट आहेत का ओके डॉक्टर साहेब आलेले आहेत तुम्ही साहेब तुम्ही बरोबर अठरा वाजता सुरू करू सिक्स्टी फोर प्लस पार्टिसिपंट हॅलो हॅलो येस सर हा येस जस्ट टू मिनिट्स मॅडम वी कॅन स्टार्ट विथ दिस एव्हिडा जस्ट टू मिनिट्स कुलकर्णी सर हॅलो मॅडम हा सर बोला हॅलो बोला सर संजय संजय नावाचे जे लॅपटॉप आहे ना त्याच्यावरचे अध्यक्ष झाले सर डॉक्टर कुचाळे सर संजय कांबळे म्हणून पण जॉईन झाले ते नाही आहेत ना ते नाही मॅडम मी रिनेम केले खुरसाळे सर ओके ठीक आहे संजय संजय ओके जॉईन झालेत सर अनम्यूट करते सरांना पुढसाळे सर तुम्हाला अनम्यूट केलंय तुमच्याकडून अनम्यूट करता का संजय अनम्यूट दिसतोय सर आता ओके दिसतोय एकोणचास एक मिनिट एक मिनिट उचाल <coughs> हॅलो मॅडम हॅलो पवार मॅडम शुड बी स्टार्ट येस सर येस सर हॅलो सर आपण रेडी आहोत 
सरांची परवानगी घ्या आणि करा सुरू So on behalf of Science Day 2020, everybody, Yogi Jyoti Mahavidyalay, Amritsar Bhai, is organizing a Science Week from 22nd February to 28th February. During this week, we have organized various online programs such as poster competition, rangoli competition, essay competition, as well as some more display of models among the students. <clears throat> Just two days back, we organized one webinar, and today, on the 28th of this February, we are organizing uh, one webinar which is related to biological sciences. So today's webinar will be devoted to skills in science, and one theme which is related to brain and the body. The so today's guest speakers are Dr. Shiva Aital from Janabasa College, Parvani, and. Dr. Mrs. Sushma Tapalkar, ex-principal, uh, Jaisalmer College, Pune. On behalf of Yogeshwari Education Society and Yogesh Mahadeve, I welcome you all for this online webinar on the eve of Science Week. Yogeshwari Education Society is one of the is one of the oldest education society in Maratwada region, which is leading to impart the science education in rural areas of Maratwada. we are a society 100 plus years we have completed more than 100 years and our science college yogeshwari science college was established in 1956 with the idea to impart science education to grassroots students in the rural area just we have completed 60 years of our uh, glorious 60 years for our college and we are about to appear for nac accreditation for the third time honorable dr suresh kursale the chairman of our educational education society and also the chairman of pune function he is amongst with us <clears throat> by profession he is orthopedic surgeon and under his kind and leadership we are leading forward with the educational excellence so with this short introduction i hand over this charge to dr v s amde who is coordinator of this webinar dr amde sir Dr. Amde, hello. Hello, Madam. Madam. Nurse, can you please unmute yourself? Yes, yes. Okay. डॉक्टर He has published six books related to the subject. He has published twenty research uh, research papers in international journals. And uh, with this brief introduction, uh, I would like to request Dr. Shiva Athal sir to start his presentation, Science of Skill Building. Thank you, sir. Uh, we are eager to listen to your lecture. So, uh, Dr. Shiva Athal sir, please start your presentation. Thank you, Dr. Narsingh Sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's my great pleasure to be here amongst the August gathering, the occasion of the Science Day. So, as a ritual, I would like to just ask, am I audible, Sir? Yes, Sir. Yes, Sir. Thank you, thank you, Madam. So, without wasting much time, I would like to jump into the job which has been assigned to me. and uh, i'd like to start my presentation 
and uh, i hope i have some around 45 to 50 minutes uh, for my presentation is that right sir yes sir yes thank you thank you madam so i'll be there time and uh, i'll be sharing my screen can you allow me to share my screen madam yes sir you are allowed saying only the host can share this share sitting madam are baap sir uh, try once done sir yes yes i will be trying to share my screen now is my screen visible madam सर परत करा बर started to share the screen please let me know if it is visible yes sir now your screen is visible sir you are you are on mobile sir yes madam okay now 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 it is very much clear the skill of clear thinking is the first slide i would like to know if it is visible yes the skill of clear thinking yes thank you very much so full screen uh, like hello sir please make it ah, full screen is it full screen now madam yes yes right thank right. you so with the permission of the chair and uh, uh, on the occasion of this auspicious day i would like to put forth some of my ideas on the science of clear thinking actually when the organizers they contacted me i just asked them uh, what is the nature of the audience they said that pg students uj students some staff and my senior most members are there so i thought of speaking on something which is related to science or social science social science the word itself is such a beautiful word but i don't know why we don't incorporate those aspects in our syllabus or curricula when we teach it to the students anyway i have been a, a lifelong student of social behavior social science and i always uh, find it fascinating to explore the human facets of brain and how this separates us from the other animals so first i would like to start from the very basic uh, approach of how we are different from animals what is the difference between humans and animals so if you just see the screen i have been observing it from many years that every year scientists they prove that some purely human traits are found in animals 
this is very interesting uh, just i would like to pause to say am i audible and is the picture clear uh, madam yes sir yes thank you just to avoid the lag i was asking the question so i'll start thank you very much so every year scientists they have been proving that some purely human trait they are found in animals like let us say sense of humor is found in chimpanzees complex communications is found in monkeys emotions are found in elephants the cultural behavior is found in dolphins then self awareness is found in some birds counting chimpanzees can do that long term memories some birds are there so on and so forth but if you compare the capacity of humans with animals we are nowhere we are no match for them if it comes to speed we have a falcon which flies at 320 km per hour and the slowest is a fish which swims at 50 km per hour and when we walk in the morning walk that is around 5 km per hour i suppose eyesight there are some eagles which have eight times sharper eyesight than us communication range of hearing is very great in some fishes life span some tortoises they live 200 years long and so on long distance running if you see cheetahs bears they are no we are no match for them so the point is we need some skill sets to survive as humans my question is which set of skills do you need i ask this to uh, this question to my students always i ask this question to myself i ask this question to the august gathering here which set of skills do we really need to distinguish ourselves from animals or let us say in this long long journey of uh, evolution and to call us as a evolved person and not a primitive one what do we need after a lot of thinking there are many skills there are many uh, components memory intelligence etc etc many but according to me i always think that the basic skill which is needed is of reasoning basic skill which is needed is of reasoning and thinking sir uh, screen yes. sharing stop jale sir yes yes parat yes. uh, i hope it's on now so this time madam ho sir this time yes so uh, which set of skills do we need this is a big question which i have been asking myself my students and everyone the answer to this we will gradually evolve into my thoughts but i think that the skills which makes us human see is the decision making skill the uh, capacity to take decisions and that to right decisions and apt decisions that is the basic thing which we need as humans now if you think science has already proved with various experiments that our brain produ- produces about 70000 thoughts per day 70000 means even when you are sleeping there are activities going out in the brain but if you delete that part of sleeping the active component of our life we encounter with 70000 thoughts per day out of this interestingly if you see 60000 thoughts are what we can uh, say is processed is not lost out of that 57000 are habitual thoughts means should i get up should i brush should i have a lunch or a dinner or what these are decisions and thoughts and thoughts are the basis for decisions and out of this for students and most of the normal human beings 45000 of these thoughts are negative in nature means what if what if i have to do this what if i have to do that so on and so forth so we have a lot of negative thoughts in our brain turning these 45000 negative thoughts what if into what if perhaps for the uh, normal life to go on we have to take a decision we have to make decisions what happens is you can only choose your thoughts but your perception of it and therefore your experience of it is what it matters you choose your thoughts 
then a person becomes a good or bad or the day becomes a good or bad or your uh, work is successful or not it is all based upon the choice of your thoughts and your perception of it you see your choice may not be right or wrong but your perception and your experience really matters it's all in the brain it's all in the brain and we as it's a science day i would like to tell you that right from your childhood till you are at you have certain chemicals in the brain which makes things function when your brain releases these chemicals you feel good you feel bad you feel sad some of the good chemicals they are dopamine serotonin oxytocin endorphin these are the good chemicals which make you good feel good when you go for a walk on the top you can see two brain scan pictures left one is a normal brain there is no serotonin in it let us say and then these can be attributed to two examples one is normal then the other is Uh, when you go for a walk your brain is filled with uh, dopamine in the in the another scanned picture this is a compilation of 20 different uh, activities into one therefore irrespective of the slide uh, just focus on what i am saying that a normal brain can look like what's it in the, in the left side and on the right side it's a brain which is full of dopamine if you go for a one hour walk or let us say it is a depressed brain which has nothing and it is a happy brain which is full of happy chemicals so if you just see the chemical structure between a dopamine and a cocaine the third picture at the bottom you will find a lot of similarities between these drugs one is a neurochemical other is a, a neuro inducer let us say cocaine so why people get a high you will understand here it is the same thing if you go for a one our walk or if you have some few dose of cocaine or if you are having a good humor with your uh, good friend and you are laughing very heart wholeheartedly then you will have this happiness it's all in the brain similarly you will have some sad chemicals also that is cortisol when cortisol is secreted you will become sad my point today is to explain or to elaborate my thoughts on what skill is needed i emphasize on the skill of clear thinking we have to have our thoughts very clear now what makes these thoughts very clear as i said chemicals are there but what induces the chemicals your thoughts now we all live in a spotlight syndrome we like to tell stories this usually happens as we go on becoming senior the more senior i become the more stories i have to tell to the younger generation and i get stuck in a loop and i keep on telling hamare zamane mein aisa nahi tha hamare zamane mein aisa tha the, the generation this generation doesn't want your cock and bull stories try to understand that. why because they are the new generation with new set of stories and the spotlight syndrome is always there it is a monkey mirroring effect which i call it as if i have the spotlight syndrome my next generation is going to have the spotlight syndrome we are so aware about our looks our uh, dress maybe what bike i have what four wheeler i have what type of a bungalow i have always thinking that the spotlight is on me and the whole world is watching let me tell you if you are wearing a white shirt and there is a small black spot on your pocket and you pass to a people of 10000 Uh, let us say mob of 10000 people you pass through it i would like, like to ask you how many of them may have watched your black spot on the pocket and told you that this doesn't look good on you sir to be very frank none maybe one who is your friend he just watch and it doesn't matter because he is your friend nobody watches but we like to live in a spotlight syndrome we are addicted to certain things we are addicted to many things i would not like to go on elaborating here because the example varies with the audience if it's students i say you are addicted to whatsapp and mobile if it's uh, adults they are addicted to something else addiction is in the brain and it is the dopamine effect which i call it as so we the point here is we all like to live or are living in a life of bias and fallacies 
we tell something the student thinks something or the listener i would like to say here i hope there are students also they should also uh, have a perspective of my thoughts we say something the listener listens something he perceives something makes it out something this is what is going on and then we all come to a point that whatever whatever i am saying is the truth it is a bias life of biasness and fallacies we are all living in we are moving away far from the truth or the fact like for example uh, this is my favorite line my very favorite line which uh, i just jokingly tell people people ask me if they ask me aap kahan rehte ho to main kehta hu main apne aukat mein rehta hu that is where we have to be the spot is there kya hum apni aukat mein rehte aukat kya hai that is the truth the truthfulness you see the second figure the, the cowboy has pulled some four to five gunshots on the board and later on he is creating the circles so as to make a impression that his shots were bulls eye he had put the shots on bulls eye that is how we all are living in what what is the reason for that for that i would like to in next coming slides give you 10 biases and 10 fallacies 10 biases and 10 fallacies which will go on to prove that if we know this as i always say to my students if you know the question you know half of the answer i'd never demand an answer i say listen to my question and understand the question at least don't worry about the answer because if you know the question half of the answer is ready in your mind understand the question so if we understand the biases and fallacies we are living in believe me meet me sometime in person i will tell you hundreds of fallacies and biases which we are living in but today uh, as the time is the constant i will tell you 10 of them i would like to put forth present 10 biases and 10 fallacies which we are living in which is making our life something which it should not be our life a life of falseness not the truthfulness and we are living just like that so the first of all is to understand the biases and fallacies first biasness is if you understand as i said then we will have a clarity in our mind of our life so the first bias which i think is the most dangerous of all and we are living in this is the confirmation bias today with the media the media people the political ideologies the religious ideologies creeping into students teachers faculties everywhere i see this is a dawn of new political and uh, ideological world world i am saying not only india left and right and left and right we are having so many thoughts and so many ideas and everybody at the top of their lungs is shouting how they and they only are right and we all are born with a confirmation bias when i have a religious ideology when i have a cultural ideology i am biased basically confirmation bias is the tendency to search for interpret recall information in a way that supports what we already believe i am a microbiologist i will always say a microbiology microbiology is the top subject in the world i will uh, go to a extent of such a crime i call it as a crime that we see arts and commerce people as some low low people which is a crime i say art of living came first commerce of trading things came second and man was lazy sat under under the tree after having his tummy full apple fell on his head and then science came into existence so science is last i think needed for survival that is our pride that is our ego the ego of a full tummy is science i suppose but still we are so having so huge confirmation bias that we really don't want the truth we just want constant reassurance that what we believe is the truth this is confirmation bias so if you can choose a middle path either left nor right the middle path of life just like the best example in today's times i think no need to say is uh, narendra modi and rahul gandhi there are followers 
what i suppose is any everybody has the right to vote to whom he wants to vote then why the debate and why the whole you and cry about who is right and who is wrong and blah 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 can we can we not just focus on what is the truth we can for that you have to kill what you love to overcome the confirmation bias you have to just it, it's called as in a classic phrase it's called as murder your darlings you have to murder your darling whatever is so dear to you murder it facts and evidences are on one side and your beliefs on on other side side and you live in the middle that is the evidence which we believe is the confirmation bias just like the two guys here they are arguing what is 6 and what is 9 both are right maybe just because one of them is right doesn't mean the other is wrong because he has not seen the life from the other side so if you can see jump on to other they cross the paths exchange their seats then you will have a clear idea then you will have a uh, dual idea of what is the perspective which you are having can we do that as a microbiologist can i see a botanist a chemist can i see arts commerce art microbiology in arts microbiology in commerce microbiology in chemistry microbiology in zoology microbiology in botany microbiology everywhere antony on leon of course a dutch merchant cloth merchant and he is a microbiology in cloths see they didn't have confirmation bias so first is confirmation bias my second is sunken cost fallacy this is a fallacy which we all live in sunken cost fallacy is paisa vasool tendency paisa vasool karne ke liye jeena just think you go to a, a cinema hall and you sit there you are watching a movie you have purchased 200 rupees ticket and within 10 minutes you think that the movie is bakwas bandal movie you can't tolerate it further more but you still sit there 3 hours and watch it why because you have spent 200 rupees and you think that you think that after watching it for 3 hours your paisa will be vasool that is the sunk cost fallacy or sunken cost fallacy it refers to the previously invested resource that you which actually cannot be recovered but you try to recover by taking a decision which is very wrong you take a decision that i will sit here for 3 hours if you are a businessman go to your shop and uh, do business for 3 hours you will earn more than 200 rupees but we never think like that students always have this they always uh, try to means uh, find out the best cost of something and lose a lot time is one of them they lose lot of time there in investing in wrong ways and wrong ideas we also adults do the same so sunk cost fallacy is the one of the bias which we fall for and there are various reasons why we fall for this sunk cost fallacy because we have a false sense of hope we have a hope that things will improve we believe that quitting is losing we will not quit ke bhai 10 minute mein theater ke bahar to main aaj zindagi bhar kabhi gaya nahi ki kaisa jaun that is a belief then we have a notion that admitting mistake will hurt my reputation this is one of the big thing then we uh, have a uh, past success and this avoids for future investment past success is there and that avoids your future investment into taking quick decision how to overcome the sunk cost fallacy quit fast quit often quit without guilt and move on this is the basic mantra for overcoming the sunk cost fallacy har kisi mein paisa vasool karne ki ek jo tendency hai that actually results into lot of loss we never know that the third bias is authority bias we all are affected by this our tendency to alter our opinions or behavior to fit those who we consider to be a senior or an authority on a given subject means if somebody i am a microbiologist and uh, if somebody some botanist comes and tells me something about microbiology i have a sense of feeling that he is not the right man i am the authority on that how can he speak what does he know and forget if some arts man a man from arts comes and 
talks authoritatively on microbiology because he has studied more out of his sheer interest i will not take that wo oh, arts wala mujhe microbiology sikhayega think about it is authority bias which you are we all are living mujhe sikhaye ki kal ka bachcha mujhe sikhayega kal ka bachcha aap dekho aap se zyada technologically advanced hai sikho aap no but we have authority bias which we are living in and it's all in the brain authority bias is the tendency to follow or believe the instructions and view of a person of authority examples of authority bias the uh, expert advice on stock market stock market most of the people they give advices yeah mujhe pata hai maine bahut market dekha hai aap invest karo i think it is a random process second is the avansha 52 flight crash this is a real uh, incidents which took place between a flight from colombia to us where the pilot was instructed to land at some airport uh, which was far away he said yes sir he had a syndrome of pleasing people that pilot has a syndrome of pleasing people he could never say no how many of we have this think about it we can never say no to our seniors what is wrong in if the senior is wrong if we should we have the capacity to tell him in a right way not in arrogant tone but in a right way sir no i cannot do this this is not right for me at the present time but that pilot was a person pleaser and he never said no he knew that there was no enough fuel in the flight but still he said yes he tried to fly over to that spot where he was instructed to go and he killed 75 people in the process this is called as the avancia flight crash incident for the authority bias then listening to the advice of the successful people some successful person comes and starts giving advice from the dais i always say that don't listen to the successful people because they never say what failure is listen to a person who has failed you will get reasons for failure successful person speaking is a fantasy is a mirage he just glorifies the things talk to a person or a successful person talk about his failures then you can listen commercials with celebrities advertisements some a heroine comes and talks about being fair and lovely applying some damn chemical cream or some sportsman comes and says this cold drink is very good for your health this is authority by then we listen no need you have experience you have basis of science think about your brain social media influencer to overcome you have to think logically assume the same recommendation may come from a lower authority question the person who is giving you the authority is affect uh, when you get affected by authority bias you become a people pleaser you have trouble disagreeing you apologize often often you have too many things on your work table which you should not be doing you feel uncomfortable when someone disagrees with you you try to avoid conflict you fear negative emotions of others nahi usko gussa aa jayega you sugar coat the things flattery is a product of authority bias you want people to like you spotlight syndrome you worry more about what people think about you and what you think about the people and you are not able to say no you always say okay okay sure 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 i'll do that i'll do that this is authority bias the fourth which is there is illusion of control i'm going to give you 10 within time i will conclude so illusion of control as the name suggests illusion of control bias describes an individual's tendency to assume more control than actually is available often in very irrational situations illusion of control is the thing that uh, मराठी मध्ये आपण बनतो ते कुत्रा जे बैल म्हणजे बैल गाडीच्या खाली चालत राहतो तो एका वेळेनंतर त्याला वाटते की ही बैलगाडी मीच चालवतो आहे काय कारण तो थांबला की बैलगाडी थांबत असते आणि तो चालला की बैलगाडी चालत असते दिस इज इल्युजन ऑफ कंट्रोल और इवन इन सम टेक्स्ट दे से दॅट लिजर्ड विच इज देअर द वॉल अपसाइड डाऊन इट थिंक दॅट इट इज होल्डिंग द होल स्लॅब ऑन इट्स ओन हँड्स इट इज इल्युजन ऑफ कंट्रोल we live just like this we live in a life with illusion of control and as an example i would like to give you an experiment which was done in america and it had a room in which the sound 
acoustic it is the acoustic sensitivity to pain experiment what they did was in a room they had some uh, students and they increased the decibel level of the sound so that it caused pain to the ear and they were told to record the level of decibel which was tolerable means at after a particular point of time if they couldn't tolerate the pain they were told to stop and the decibel levels were measured interestingly in another set of in, uh, experiment in room b one one thing was done room b had a red panic button on the wall the panic button was purely for show it was not functioning but it gave participants the feeling that they were in control of the situation they were told that if you are in pain press this red panic button don't worry we will take care of so they had assurance that if something happens i can press this button and nothing will happen so it was found that people in room b tolerated more pain as compared to room a because it led them to withstand significantly more noise because they thought they had control of pain over them we all, all have this illusion of control over us we think that i am controlling the situation you think when you go for a leave of 10 to 15 days you keep on thinking that mai nahi hai to wahan kya ho raha hoga mai nahi hu to kaam to hoga hi nahi meri wahan kitni zarurat hai nobody is indispensable remember that nobody is indispensable great leaders have perished the world still goes on not a single system is indispensable everything can function without you but we live in a illusion which where we think that i have control over the situation if we understand this if you understand that my presence is not the only thing but it is a collective effort it is a team effort the lowest of the rank person working in my organization is as equally as important as i am the head of this institution or the whole owner of this institution this is that is uh, there is a separate uh, philosophy called as the uh, servant philosophy we have to the bosses have to work as if they are servants servant ideology something uh, different perspective but that will remove the illusion of control issue in your mind the fifth one is outcome bias now this is very interesting for students and teachers alike what happens is that if a student comes in merit the teacher says that my student is there in merit i worked hard i taught so nicely that my students came in merit how many of us flaunt our students uh, merits and medals on the facebook and whatsapp saying that this is my student and he got the medal and somewhere on the back of your mind you think that that is due to me outcome bias now go to the student ask him secretly or try to read his mind he said he thinks ये मेडल तो मुझे मेरे मेहनत की वजह से मिला है किसी ने कुछ नहीं किया है किसी ने पढ़ाया नहीं है कुछ नहीं है नो बडी टॉट मी इट इज ऑल हंड्रेड परसेंट माई एफर्ट्स दे आर जस्ट टेकिंग द क्रेडिट अननेसेसरीली बोथ ऑफ देम थिंक लाइक दैट देर इज समथिंग ट्रुथ इन बिटवीन कैन यू रियलाइज वॉट दैट ट्रुथ इज यू टू सी इट मे बी द बॉर्न इंटेलिजेंशिया ऑफ द स्टूडेंट और रियली इट मे बी यू हु वर्क इट आउट और रियली इट वॉज द स्टूडेंट हु वर्क इट हार्ड i always say that pushing a 70% student to 90% is a very easy job but bringing a 30% student to 40% is the toughest job for a teacher think about bringing a 20% a student who is 20% to 40% is a real job of a teacher pushing somebody who is already capable of achieving 70 to 9 pushing him to 90 95 is no big deal that that happens automatically just you have you need a little push but here a big pull is needed taking successful outcomes as evidence for a good decision or unsuccessful outcomes as evidence for bad decision without regarding the prior state of knowledge is outcome bias for surgery let us say if uh, there is a very difficult surgery where the surgeon is about to fail he the surgeon and the operation succeeds very proudly the doctor says are kuch nahi tha wo mere bai haath ka but if there is very 10% chance of failure and if the surgeon fails then he then the people 
will have a lawsuit against him the doctor will keep on thinking how this happened this is the outcome we are can we come out of the outcome we are we judge a decision based on the outcome this is the basis of outcome we are rather than how exactly the decision was made for example if you win a big lottery somewhere in a casino or a gambling den in goa let us say that doesn't mean that your gambling was a very smart decision because you won crores in that that is outcome bias sixth is planning fallacy planning fallacy is the tendency to underestimate how long it will take to complete a task we always fail syllabus remaining half the students unable to cover the syllabus for their exams we always fall short of our planning and man keeps on planning the planning always fails why this happens it is called as the planning fallacy it is a tendency to underestimate how long it will take to complete a task we never know we always ha- it happens that uh, you plan something and it takes too long for example if you give students two dates of submission just uh, think which will they choose you give them one date uh, of tomorrow's and one one date after one week for submission of their project practicals whatever that think about it which will they choose 99% of the students they will say yes sir next week we will submit next week why because they know that they they don't have a plan they don't have a plan their plan plain why because mostly the plan in the mind is a straight line but in reality it's with lot of ups and downs affected by various parameters and it will take long time to reach your goal or aim same thing happens in classic example with research students here you see your research is supposed to be completed within 3 years i think 100% of the students not a single student has completed his phd in 3 years why that thing happens why the planning fails it is the planning fallacy we never plan properly and we always believe that my plan is perfect but we never consider the parameters which will affect your plan so we have to come out of that planning fallacy planning fallacy always the seventh is endowment effect endowment effect now these are some of the biases and fallacies which we live in the whole life we live in and we don't have a clarity of uh, the life if you can understand this and overcome this i think we will have a clear vision of how to live life and all this thing is in the brain endowment effect is believing that whatever i have is the best and what the person in the front he has is the worst it is not good what i do is best what the person does in front of me is not better than me at least colleagues think about it how many of you really appreciate your colleagues uh, lectures works research from the heart without saying it to anyone don't even tell it to me here that yes i appreciate my colleagues work my colleagues lecture so no, we have that endowment effect we are unwilling to trade our things with our counterparts or our uh, and this is the basis for patriarchy and uh, what you can say the feminism movements which are taking isn't it patriarchal systems they have always dominated we never ever feel that whatever it may be from the bottom of the heart thing males especially my at this question uh, honorable ladies are also present here they will agree with me that males will never think that women are better that is the uh, endowment effect at, at, at as a society as whole we have to overcome this we have to give equal opportunity of respect and beliefs to everyone around us this is just like uh, people who value an object they possess much more than that they don't they don't have this happens so endowment effect is uh, one thing which we un- if we understand then we can overcome it eight is the contrast effect. i would like to uh, tell a small story here small short story it is a real story of two brothers sid and harry they ran a uh, clothing store in america in 1930s Sid was in charge of sales and Harry led the tailoring department. Since one brother sold the cloths and the other uh, stitched the cloths. Whenever Sid noticed that the customer 
who stood before the mirror really liked the suit what he did for acting karta tha he became a little hard of hearing i just sunai nahi aa raha hai aisa karta tha and he would call his brother harry how much this suit costs harry would look up to his from his cutting table tailoring table and shout back oh for that beautiful cotton suit uh, i think that is 42 dollars actually believe me that suit was 15 dollars that suit was around 15 to 18 dollars but exaggerated price harry would shoot up oh for that beautiful suit it is 42 dollars and sid would pretend jaisa ki usne suna nahi and he used to say how much harry would yell again 42 dollars sid would again turn to the customer and say i think my brother says 22 dollars now see suddenly the customer has heard the conversation customer had heard that harry was saying 42 sid is saying 22 suddenly he picks up the he says yes i am purchasing it give it he pays 22 dollars and runs away they are still plus 8 dollars this is the contrast effect contrast effect is we are we are ruined by the advertisement by the contrast effect. contrast effect is something like this both the blue dots are of same size this is a illusion you know very well most of you have may have seen it i have bought it here is again because in the contrast effect we notice the difference between the things but we do not absorb the absolute measures we do not absolutely measure whether that is really big and small or not advertisements they do large screen effect big screen why do you people worship the screen actors screen goddesses they say because they are larger than life the screen people all the nonsense people out there acting if we forget that they are acting okay and we give such a huge importance to all the screen divas actors and actresses that they become larger than our own life it is called as the contrast we notice the difference between things but not the absolute measure as a example if you put one hand in your in cold water one hand in hot water leave them for a while then take it out and put both into lukewarm water that is a mixture of this lukewarm you will be surprised to know that the left still feels hot while the right still feels cold or there there is exchange of that phenomenon this is what we are always living with this is a cognitive bias which happens So we have to overcome that. The ninth is overthinking effect, usually for students and most of the people in today's times of technology, smartphones becoming smart and smarter. We are becoming more and more idiotic in nature. The phones are becoming smart. Brain is opening too many tabs. I can say our brain keeps open too many tabs, which don't close down even when you sleep. Meditation is a long, long, long. Sorry, nobody can meditate in today's time because we are suffering from overthinking. We shift from thinking to too much to learning from too much. This is the one which happens with us. Just I would like to pause to ask: Am I audible? And is the session on, sir, properly? Is it functioning properly? I'd like to ask Adam. Adam, is the fun? Is the session going on properly? Am I audible, sir? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, thank you. Just thought I should not get lost in time. So I just counter check. Thank you, madam. Thank you for your feedback. I will be closing in a few minutes. So the ninth effect is overthinking effect, which I was trying to explain. In today's times, we have so many tabs of our brain open, and we suffer from overthinking. That, as I said, meditation is a long, long, long thing to achieve. But still, can we overcome this overthinking effect? and save ourselves and our brains to function for what it needs to function we are constantly obsessed about the problems instead of finding the solutions in today's times 
we are not able to shift our mental frame from loss to gain from negative to positive we always go on becoming negative and negative we feel that we feel a decision fatigue when we are not making so many decisions if you are given a uh, opportunity to make decisions you have a decision fatigue and you are not really making so many decisions why this is happening we are stuck in analysis paralysis and we are not able to find a perfect solution i call it as analysis paralysis we analyze so much so much that we don't conclude anything zyada soch hamare faislon ko kamzor kar rahi hai we tend to solve problems in our head instead of in real life action we try to solve it in the head itself so this is the overthinking effect and overthinking today is the biggest cause of unhappiness can we or come the overthinking problem that last is the shaufer knowledge which i would like to put forth in front of you there are two types of knowledge the street knowledge and the plank knowledge the street smartness you see this is very important for us to understand and pass on to the next generation when we keep telling stories of our past when we start telling stories of our past we tend to overblow the things we don't put it as it is we glorify ourselves we have all the syndromes and the fallacies in front of us and whenever we start a story we put ourselves as the hero of that story which is not always the truth this is called as chauffeur knowledge chauffeur not chauffeur the driver driver let us say a uh, low class let us say maybe why why street smartness street smartness is totally different from intellectual smart intellectual smartness is different and street smartness just folding up your sleeves for any situation is street smart ane to dekhta hu main street smart ane do sochenge kya karna that is need some knowledge i'd like to tell a small story of nobel prize winner max planck who in 1918 after winning the nobel prize went on tour across germany and for lectures on quantum mechanics all of you must be knowing this but for those who don't know see this is a very interesting story he gave lectures on quantum mechanics because he got a uh, nobel prize for that over the time he chauffeur chauffeur is driver he was there for long time and he learned the whole lecture by heart planks max planks whole lecture was learned by heart by the planks driver chauffeur so one day he asked he gets very bored because he doesn't understand anything so every lecture he has to listen to the same plank theory so he says professor plank how about that i give this lecture one day and you can sit in the front row and become my driver i have learned that much from you and that will give some change plank likes the idea so that evening in munich the driver goes on the dais gives a long lecture on quantum mechanics in front of distinguished audience later on there is a deliberation and a noted physics professor stands up with a question which the driver cannot give there is a question asked now the driver is trying to act as plank but he doesn't know but his wisdom what he does the driver says oh this is a very simple question why don't you ask my draw, driver my chauffeur he will answer it my chauffeur will answer the question and my driver will answer the question this is called a chauffeur knowledge are you that driver who really is a scientist or are you a scientist who is acting like a driver or are you a driver who is acting as a scientist this is the thing which you should know so there are two types of knowledge knowledge chauffeur knowledge there is surface knowledge which comes people pretend just googling something and telling something ask could i ask students anything they know everything because that is chauffeur knowledge they will they will extract it from google their mind doesn't have it seeded in there we all do that go to a doctor do, doctor prescribe something we google it and know more than the doctor and when then we start advocating the doctor which is very dangerous so you have to come out of it you have to come out of this shop for knowledge people with real knowledge and people with shop for knowledge there is a difference people with real knowledge they make effort to understand the topic communicate the knowledge they say i don't know when they don't know 
they recognize their limits and they know when they don't know they ask this is important whereas people who shop for knowledge they will never ask they have no time or interest to understand the topic they never say i don't know they will say i know everything they say everything is known and they read it from a script maybe from google maybe from wikipedia they have a showmanship and they try to dominate their presence finally lastly i would like to give an example of michelangelo's most famous sculpture david the three photographs which you are seeing the third i have shown because this give you the magnitude of its height it is a huge statue beautifully carved one of the artistic creativities of michelangelo you see if you see the hand even the vein and veinlets he has carved from the stone the expressions are beautiful hair hair locks it's a full naked body of david it's a masterpiece of masterpieces it is believed that it is a masterpiece of masterpieces in the field of arts the roman pope once asked michelangelo tell me your secret of your genius how can you create the statue of david which is a masterpiece of all masterpieces michelangelo's answer was very simple simply said i removed everything that is not david i just removed the unwanted parts from the sculpture can we do that can we remove the biases and fallacies from our life and have a notion of clear thinking so my question which set of skills do we really need i believe that we need a skill set of clear thinking and a good decision making which comes from education education and scientific education is one of the most powerful tools in today's times which gives the power to think clearly which gives the power to act well in the world's work and which gives the power to appreciate life i hope we all try or urge to live a life like this thank you thank you very much i thank all the organizers for giving me opportunity to speak on this auspicious day and this sir joshi sir madam organizers everybody thank you thank you one and all thank you sir thank you very much dr shiva sir for your excellent and informative lecture thank you once again now i am moving toward the next lecture i am here to introduce second speaker of today's webinar we are having renowned guest speaker dr sushma chafalkar madam she is principal of sharachandra pawar college jejuri she has completed her phd degree from agarkar research institute pune now she is phd guide of savitri bai phule pune university pune and dr baba saheb ambedkar marathwada university aurangabad her research contribution is vast she has 89 research paper of international repute on her credit she successfully completed research projects and obtained funds from different central government funding agencies she is founder member of vidya pratishthan school of biotechnology baramati she established vsbt in very nice manner she worked as nac assessor she is principal coordinator of dbt star college project she honored with various award and prizes one of them is she was felicitated with renowned punjab rao deshmukh outstanding women scientist award today she is going to deliver lecture on phycobiome the brain and gut connection with this brief introduction i request dr sushma chapalkar madam to start her presentation chapalkar madam please please share your screen thank you so Unmute. much uh-huh. yeah thank you so much dr hamde at the outset let me uh, thank the organizers for giving me this wonderful opportunity Uh, to be with you, all of you all students of yogeshwari mahavidyalay all staff and the management um, people uh, on this very occasion of uh, science day uh, am i allowed to share the screen sir yes yes yeah madam am i allowed 
Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay, just, just a moment. Just a moment. Do you do you see the screen? Yes, ma'am. Is it clearly seen? Make it full screen. Make it yeah. slideshow. Yeah. Going there. Why is it not going? Mm. Just a moment. Yeah, is it seen? Yeah. yeah, 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 it's working. Yeah, yeah. Good morning, everybody. Uh, let me thank Principal R.D. Joshi, IQAC coordinator, Dr. Hamde, uh, your vice principal, uh, Dr. Kulkarni, uh, the management people, the president, Dr. Kutsare, uh, for giving me this opportunity to be with you uh, today on a topic which says that there's something called a psychobio and which speaks about the brain and gut connection that we all human beings have and perhaps the animals also have, we're not very well aware. It's a wonderful coincidence that my uh, earlier speaker spoke about brain and the thinking of brain and clear thinking and how does one achieve it. And then something that I might want to introduce to the audience today is uh, how can we keep it tight and right, okay, through our gut. So uh, the next uh, slide, which is a title slide, which also says the same. And uh, uh, here we begin. Uh, what is the outline of the talk that I would like to introduce to you? It is about understanding the gut microflora. Because I'm a microbiologist by profession and training, I, I would choose more microbiology, but then I sincerely believe that science should not be compartmentalized into these subjects. It was a necessity long back that we had to specialize and go vertically and to understand that particular subject better. For example, uh, zoology, botany, mathematics, physics, but, but we cannot understand the machine of human body without knowing the uh, whole, uh, wholeness of the science behind it. Now we have to know what is the gut and brain axis. We've never thought of ourselves as machines. And therefore this axis term comes little mechanically to us. And we do not imagine such axis within our bodies. The psychobiome explained the microbiome based drug for mental health. I'm sure mental health is a big, big thing now because earlier we used to see physical health would make us live longer. But then if the mental health weakens us inwardly with all the fallacies and biases that Dr. Shiva uh, just now discussed with all of us, then we are not really doing good mentally. And if you're not doing good mentally, then uh, even a gym master can uh, have uh, problems. So, and the last one, which I will bring home for the students who feel that the introduction to this topic is a future to their career. So, they might want to know how does one go about it as a career or as a startup or as something for the PhD program or something which might take them to the research avenues. Now, here we start. I'm sure, am I audible? Yes, yes. Yes, yeah. Uh, now, here we go with little more depth in the scientific acumen that I would like all of you to know. Your standard first to your standard 12th um, literature has been brought out on this slide, which says that bacterial ecology in the GI tract, that is gastrointestinal tract. You know this since long, the mucosal surface of GI tract, GI is gastrointestinal tract is colonized by a trillion cells actually. And they say that the surface area in the textbooks, it is written that the surface area of a GI tract is around 200 to 300 square meters. But now they have eventually found out that it is somewhere around 40 square meters. Now this, this kind of an understanding of GI tract also brings us to the ignorances that we earlier had in the scientific community. 
I will not date it to the ancient Indian community because that would put us into a little of bias. But then as we proceed in this particular discussion, you will understand that how right we eat as Indians. Second is the biomass, microbial biomass within us is approximately two kgs. So if I am weighing 60 kgs, two kgs are contributed by the microbial biomass. And it is also said in 2000, we had the whole human genome done by Celera. And they say these, kind, these genes are also contributive by the microbial biomass that is there on the body. We are discussing two kgs within our uh, GI tract. We have skin, we have other, other organs which also harbor equal number of bacteria which can contribute to the total human genome that we normally discuss is entirely ours. There is a fallacy there. 400 different species. When we learn FY, SY, TY, part one, part two, MSc program in any university in India, we, we learn around um, 100 number of times the enteric bacteria, but they do not speak about 400 different species. It's high time that we realize the shortcoming of the syllabus and studio students, I on this science day, I, I allow you to uh, collaborate with your own body and find out which are these 400 around different species residing within you. Microbiology shikun kai upyog zala asa kadihin mag vatnar nai tumhala. You are, you are using that particular understanding to make your microbiota and your life better. Now, this term is little uh, different than the terms you learn about enteric bacteria. This is autochthonous, that is indigenous flora. We have to learn these terms because we learn science in foreign language. Had this been stavar flora, autochthonous flora is indigenous, which is which has given the privilege and adaptation to colonize particular habitat, which is physical space in the GI tract. You have a small diagram here, and physical space in GI tracts are shown clearly here. And the GI tract is also given. What does it say? It has a pH gradient. Everybody here knows how digestion proceeds. Once we eat, what happens to the food till we excrete the rest of it? Stomach is pH 1.5 to 5. Duodenum is 5 to 7. Jejunum is 7 to 9. Ilium is 7 to 8. And the rest of the colon is around 5 to 7. So what is the total microbial biomass that goes in this pH? It is highest somewhere in the uh, Jejunum, which is 10 raised to 4 to 5. And ilium, which is 10 raised to 8. So the bacterium has to survive a pH gradient, which is very difficult for any other life form to help. So here, when we say colonize, these are the bacteria which have undergone this flux, which has undergone this gradient every day in and day out. And they have, they have been successfully colonized in the mucosal surface of the GI tract, somewhere in the physical space, okay? And what is olopthonus? Um, it is transient flora. Transient flora meaning transient is uh, sometimes it is on, sometimes it is not. So they cannot colonize particular habitat except under abnormal conditions. And this is the main topic that I would like to touch upon. Colonization of transient flora is also an indication of an abnormal condition. So what is abnormal condition? It is bad health of the physical facility that God has given us, which was described so very differently by the earlier speaker. And it is also connecting my mental and psychological health. This is the point that I want to bring home to my students today who would be immensely benefited if they start practicing the right way up. What are the factors which affect the gut microflora? Those which are autochthonous and those which are transient. pH, of course. Nutrition and exercise, of course. Age, yes, definitely. Wear and tear of the machine. Stress, unnecessary wear and tear. Addictions, which I am not going to discuss today, but it would mean so much to those who are already in need. Interactions with other bacteria. It could be anything from antagonism to symbiosis. And adhesion, very importantly, adhesion. 
So when I say I have some indigenous flora, then it means that it has bypassed, it has overcome the entire aspects that I have mentioned, and then they have colonized successfully. How do they colonize? Let us discuss that succession. We are born, we are in the amniotic fluid and we have a flora, they say. Earlier there was a misnomer that it was, it was a sterile thing uh, and only bifidobacterium bifidus would be brought in and so give honey and uh, that would make the right colony available in the child's or infant's or a newborn's intestine. Very true in one way, but now they say that even amniotic fluid could have some or the other uh, influence on the GI tract. Newborn location, you can have a normal delivery and you can have a C-section. You can have formula milk or mother's milk. Now, these also would, would definitely matter so much because the first nutrition and the mode of birth also dictate enterobacteriaceae and bifidum in their, uh, in their titer in that particular thing. If it's a uh, normal delivery, lactobacillus, prevotalia, and some other genus, um, I, just as I told you, there are very new genera even to me, and I would like to really uh, start listening and learning about it. In C-sections, you have staph, corony, and propioni. You, you have different set of bacterial population in a newborn, depending on whether the milk provided is natural or formula. In the weaning period, solid foods when are taken, ushtavan, zhalyanantar, jema kima thoda sa adhi, ya firmicutes ta tithe pradurba hoto. And this is a schematic representation and not to the scale. Then in the early childhood, traditional foods which we provide in the Indian context and maybe in the Western context also matter so much. And this is a particular reference is Tanaka Etl 2017. So this is the very recent um, uh, attractive research avenue for all over the world where people are thinking and pondering about it. Now diversity of bacterial species. I, I have brought a very sincere effort that we look beyond E. coli, we look beyond bacteria which are there in the syllabus and which reside within us, but it is not in the syllabus and so you don't learn about them till your MSc part two distinction. You do not know about maybe Valionella, uh, Rothia, Nigeria. Nigeria, you must be knowing Gonorrhea, but the most important is Lactobacillus. And that we shall discuss later on. They are in the oral cavity, they say. Stomach, as already uh, proved by the Nobel Prize winner, that Helicobacter pylori, causative agent of ulcer, is there as a commensal, but the titer matters. Small intestine, again the same, but ruminococcus, I would bring down your um, uh, factor to ruminococcus, which is a butyrate producing genera. And butyrate is one of the most important chemical signals for mental and uh, gut biota. So these are the, and in the large intestines, you have the other proteobacteria and other species or genera, which matter so much. These bacteria have effect on metabolism, immune system. We knew about it, not directly, but indirectly through their metabolites and the chemical signals that they provide. I'll tell you, there are 500 neurons in the GI tract and brain has 100 neurons. And these two neurons speak to each other just in the uh, first uh, cartoon that I have shown you. The immune system and the nervous system. This is not often taught to a microbiology or zoology or any anthropology student. Now the gut fast database, dear students, this is the brand new avenue that comes. We have never taught that the phages have a habitat of human gut or animal gut or a lizard gut or anywhere else. So this is the advantage of being scientific. The, the research that has been carried out across the globe has enriched human life so much so that understanding it and living skillfully is, is a blessing of clear thinking. Scientific thinking may or may not be termed as clear thinking, but yes, it is a gateway to clear thinking. GI tract microflora consists of bacteriophages. Now, this is a discovery for those who, are not, who have not learned in uh, this, uh, these phages as habitat is human gut. 
phages regulate bacterial population inside. Now you can imagine a phage within your colonized autochthonous um, bacterial population in the GI gut. And as you know, these can transfer genes. So they can have a species variation in the gut itself if this is the possibility. And one phage, as is perceived, has more than one species as its host. So obligate parasite, intracellular parasite within a gut is, is having a privilege for itself to colonize. And then there is a definite genetic transfer. Uh, learned microbiologists will definitely say that. Now this, there is a database in UK. What I have bought you is a reference of February, 2021 which says that there is a gut phage database where viral genomes, this is gut phage database, GDP stands for gut phage database, and which is more than one lakh viral genomes, half of which are previously unknown. So even those who are well acclaimed in the viral genomes of bacteriophages have found out the mystery of these particular GPDs. And this is something which can give rise to many startups in the near future to make your gut healthy and wealthy. So this will aid discovery of new treatments. And these new treatments are the, uh, are the uh, privileges that I have brought to you. And this is just a schematic um, diagram of the metagenomes of 28 countries spanning 60, six continents. Because habitats will vary, nutrition will vary, people will vary in their microbiome that is understood. Everybody's phage microbiome is unique, they say. Now, this is a very important scientific happening in GI. So this uh, is a new. So what is psychobiome? I have described a word psychobiome in the title. And it is a group of companies, a group of youngsters who are thinking about microbiome, which affects our uh, psychology, our thinking, how we feel, how we act, how we behave is psychobiome. So crosstalk between gut microbiota and brain may have a crucial impact during basic neurological processes and disorders. Now these disorders are autism, uh, in the, uh, which is a birth, dis birth disorder, but then you can have Alzheimer, Parkinson, which is a degenerative disorder. So you, neurological disorders are the worst one can have. Uh, if I, uh, some, some are simple and hidden like OCD, obsessive compulsive behavior. So this is a disorder. People often neglect schizophrenia, very neglected very, because uh, neglected because very few people uh, get into schizophrenia relatively and they are not going to yield anything for the pharma companies. So uh, this is one, one, person, uh, one thing that one needs to understand. Alteration in the composition of gut microbiota affects thoughts and behavior. You have seen very weird news. When you open the newspaper, you see very weird relationships getting into horrific stories. You see people committing suicide at the uh, smallest uh, disappointments. You see young people sacrificing their, their quality time in depression and uh, uh, nervous breakdowns and etc. They say that these are the alterations signaled by this biosis of gut flora. I'll come to dysbiosis, but symbiosis is a word which we love so much. If we create dysbiosis within us, we are here for alteration in the composition and which will affect eventually our thoughts and behavior. Eat right. Cyclobiome, psychobiome implies the microbiome of the gut affecting one's mental health, definitely. Now here I come to the most important slide, which everybody knows, but we in kind of in the rat race of life, we kind of neglect ourselves and I am no exception. So I'm talking from the bottom of my heart. It's the young age where you have to have a very conscious effort to keep your microbiota right. And you should have a realization that everything in my body is, is definitely interconnected, interlinked, even to the uh, level of my thoughts. And my thoughts dictate my behavior. Stress, uh, there is brain, there is gut, and there is microbiota. What is dysbiosis? Inflammatory cytokines, neuromodulators, microbial metabolites, dietary fermentation. 
Now these can cause dysbiosis. It is a bi-directional talk. Bi-directional meaning the brain would talk to you, your gut, and your gut will send messages to your brain. And when there is dysbiosis, there is going to be a discomfort. Microbiota is going to talk to your brain through neuroendocrine immune medita- mediator. These words might sound very, very uh, systematically British, but then I can tell you, you just need to know that whatever we eat creates precursors to the hormones that are really important in our behavior and thought process. Gut is going to have an axis there, which says that HPA axis, which is hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis. Adrenal is a gland above your kidneys, pituitary and hypothalamus are equilocated, so to say. And they have termed it as enteronervous system. ENS stands for enteronervous system. And the vagus nerve, out of the 12 nerves that you will learn in 10th and 12th standard, somewhere around that, the most important nerve that is vagus nerve is connecting your GI tract with your brain. And this brain, after stress, is exhibiting loneliness, autism, Cognitive deficit. Cognitive deficit is a deficit which is dementia. You cannot recognize. Cognition is recogni- uh, cognition is identifying, having a reference there. And behavioral disorders and psychological disorders. We see it more often than not these days and blame it on your not so right microbiota. Now this is Chiram- Chidambaram et al. 2020. The vagus nerve connects brain and gut regulates breathing, swallowing, digestion of food, sends signals from brain to gut and vice versa. Metabolites secreted by microbes in the gut may infiltrate blood vessels and reach brain. Uh, Barring the blood-brain barrier, they may have some kind of offensive and defensive system there. Yeah. So uh, microbes prompt neuropod cells in the gut lining to stimulate the vagus nerve. Now, what I'm discussing here are the mechanisms through which this particular HPA axis is functional in the body. And it is, it is functional and it has its own periodic rhythm because the neuropods are the cells which are lined, uh, which are the linings of vagus nerves. Microbes activate enteroendocrine cells in the gut lining, which send hormones throughout the body. And the regulation finally may be somewhere else. But then we are responsible as microbiota there. That is what they say. Microbes influence gut immune cells. There are immune cells in the, cell, in the gut. There are endocrine cells in the gut. There are neuropods in the gut. And there is a pool of micro, micro new, nano metabolites in the, in the uh, uh, GI tract, which are finally responsible for the Uh, mental health of the person as is evident from many animal studies and human studies will be uh, and we we can give various projects on this provided someone funds it last mechanism through which this signaling is taken place is inflammation and immune cells and inflammation which can affect the brain now which are the metabolites we are discussing short chain fatty acids such as butyrate, I mentioned ruminococcus, and there is something called as lichenococcus also, which which have been seen in a large amount of research papers are available on butyrate producing bacteria in the human gut. And it's also tryptophan to a certain extent. Psychobiosis for mental health, biotics for center. We have learned about prebiotics, which prompt the colonization or production of probiotics. Probiotics, which give you a ready-made dose of microbiota, uh, right microbiota to eat. But, But this is called as psychobiotics, where you are carefully looking at which are those microbial genera or species, which are not able to adhere due to some reasons, maybe overdose of antibiotics, as, a, as I didn't mention in one of those slides, where use rampant use in Indian culture, we do not have a very careful selection of antibiotic administration in uh, public health. Very bad point, because everywhere else in the world, you cannot go to the pharmacist and take antibiotics at your own risk. You are risking the entire microbiota. 
the wrong microbiota uh, we are creating abnormal conditions by taking antibiotics what will happen is body will choose antibiotic resistant flora and which is not going to give you the same mental health which uh, which is uh, perceived at the time of our birth so this biosis will get into the place and opportunistic microbes can take advantage proliferate resulting in inflammation and inflammation is the root cause of many many known and unknown diseases of human body and mind microbiome based novel therapies for this biosis correction so we are trying to make our i will not touch uh, wrong eating habits wrong sitting habits wrong uh, addictions or taking stress unnecessarily or overthinking or whatever will not have symbiosis of microbiota or even the uh, kind of uh, uh, with the balance that ayurveda discusses will not get into the details we know symbiosis we know dysbiosis do not cause dysbiosis and what are the micro uh, my, my, microbiome based novel therapies for dysbiosis correction assuming that during the course of modern life during the course of rat race so many examination students have to get into the most important mental health disorder is panic and anxiety ocd and depression it is not very serious from a uh, 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 family point of view but then consistent anxiety consistent panic consistent depression is something which takes out quality life out of you people often wonder everything is there why the person is suffering and th this particular is due to dysbiosis as they say because the so much research is available now they are saying just as transplantation of bone marrow just as transplantation of a vital organ which is made visible why don't you do a very simple exercise of microbiota and this is what is known as psychobiotics with a conscious effort of transplanting the right kind of microbiota for a right uh, for a wrong kind of dysbiosis that the person is suffering from is a matter of diagnosis and treatment so that will be done through through various means and there are many startup companies around the world which are thinking on similar lines psychobiotics will be soon sold Uh, on the same shelf but with the proper diagnosis and detection along with the prebiotic and probiotic era that we already have seen uh, and can be a correction through our normal food exercise also because prebiotics are fibrous foods that we normally eat probiotics are life cultures that we have through buttermilk or curd buttermilk is the best thing Uh, in my uh, my microbiology um, my one of my microbiology heads dr ranjan garge had told us ki tak manje prithvi var cha amrut asto ani te kiti khare he 21 21 20 21 madhe agdi siddha hote hai ani 21 21 madhe te janarud zhalela ase patch based therapies very interesting and something which has prompted me to take this topic to you psychobiotics include probiotics live bacteria which when ingested confer mental health benefits through interactions with commensal gut bacteria bhojananti tak ghyave ani te sudha thode ghyave ase aplya ithe sangitle asta bhojnacha adhi nahi ani bhojnacha uparant nahi jeva shevat hai tema tumhi allow that particular uh, there is another hypothesis there that the uh, prebiotic that you are taking or probiotic you are taking should escape the stomach ph because the bacteria would require lactobacilli would require something safer to travel and colonize the intestines which are again alkaline to certain extent the environment in microaerobic aerophilic or uh, anaerobic so to say even clostridium can be seen inside so prebiotic is the food that enhance the growth of beneficial not to mention i'll come straight to a very different topic now having known this those who are futuristic and those who want to become scientist by profession everybody can become a science lover but few become scientists 
and these scientists if you want to become a scientist then how does one do this microbiome exercise how does one know the psychobiotics what to give and when to give now i'll take you through a very favorite slide of mine these are this is microbiology to metagenomics so evolution of methods in microbiology i'm sure we all learn history of microbiology with a lot of passion but now we have to take this history as something which is done 20 years ago only because so much is being done in biology in life science and with this corona pandemic we have become so careful about our lives that it is very important to know what are the most modern techniques where culture independent diagnosis is done and i'll take you through 1676 to 2011 the milestones which give us the idea of dna sequences even bacteriophages are dna uh, uh, viruses the corona one is rna virus which allows you see dna and then having a uh, genome exercise out of all the new species old species but from lewen hock to next gene sequencing to metagenomics what is metagenomics there is one more slide that i would like to explain to you but what i will take you through is in the 17th century late 17th centuries we saw that microbes are indeed some kind of entities which are around us without we being aware of it they are invisible then robert koch said that no life begets life then you have ino gradesky microbial e ecology experiments the first time that they do not occur in pure culture they have a ecology for themselves where all kind of love and hate relationship exist in a given niche area then sanger then in uh, late 20th century he developed dna sequencing so we do now don't need to culture we can go for sequencing culture independent exercise and then onwards till 2011 we have a roche uh, we have a human genome uh, microbiome project publication and in 2021 we see the gut bacteriophage viral genome database is published by uk so the point is when we learn history of microbiology we don't have to rush to the 300 year old all the time it's good to know but what is happening around you in the world in continents and with which reflect on your independent exercise of gi tract is something which should attract you dear students and you must know it it is not beyond your reach so metagenomics is one of the tools which is going to enable you to understand the microbiome independent of your culture you may have to take some excreta samples but you may you you can do without pure cultures and there is no point in not knowing which is not culturable because you you end up into knowing which is culturable in all those excreta samples be it blood be it urine be it stool be it something else all the time you see occult blood in the stool samples if they are green so it's physico chemical exercise but then if you want to see what is not culturable then you will have to depend yourself on something called as metagenomics now what is done here is extraction of high quality dna which is not very difficult vis a vis the um, specific and non specific one i'll not get into the details but i always feel that students should be exposed to what is new what is something which they might have to choose as a career so where where are we going to get the sequencer when are we but then teach something little less it's not required me nehmi je udharan dete te ushtavanach dete त्या छोट्या मुलाला नवव्या महिन्यामध्ये उष्टावणामध्ये क्लिअरली असं दिलं जातं जे त्याला पुढे जाऊन खायचं आहे तो काय ती जिल अख्खी जिलबी खाणार नसतो पण त्याला दाखवली जाते जिलबी तो काही श्रीखंडाची वाटी खाणार नसतो पण त्याच्या त्याच्या वाटीत थोडस श्रीखंड दिलं जातं त्याला भात दिला जातो सो सिमिलरली डिअर स्टुडंट यू आर बीन एक्सपोज टू दिस टेक्निक्स डू नॉट गेट इंट्रोड्यूस टू दिस टेक्निक्स एज समथिंग विच युअर फ्युचर होल्ड फॉर यू clinical microbiome analysis are usually based on targeted shotgun metagenomic next genome sequencing which is very common just as we culture they have agencies and get this done genome sequence assembled into there comes in silico exercise in vitro is within petri dishes in vivo is animal experiments and in silico are bioinformatics element 
attachments in genomes and these genomes libraries are exercises made हेलो मरण मैडम दुर्गा मैडम बोला सर तक अनम्यूट जाए पड़ते मैडम सर हाँ मैडम बाधित पड़ा हो मैम अनम्यूट फ्रॉम योर साइड अनम्यूट करा मैडम या केल एम आई ऑडिबल यस मैम यस माय लास्ट स्लाइड एक्चुअली वॉज on uh, i'll go to that slide now am, am i seen on the screen madam yeah the yes ma'am conclusion yes ma'am conclusion is microbiome gut brain axis influences how we think feel and behave very important अपन बयाच वे संस्कार अब्रिंगिंग बाकी सग्या गोषी बयाचा बिहेवियरल पैटर्न का दोषारोप दी पी हेव टू थिंक साइंटिफिकली ऑल्सो समटाइम्स वाई दी बिहेवियर फ्रॉम अ सर्टन पर्सन इज फ्लक्चुएटिंग एंड बिकमिंग सो अनप्रेडिक्टेबल दैट वी के नॉट रियली सस्टेन इट क्रॉस टॉक बिट्वीन मैक्रोव एंड ब्रेन एफेक्ट्स बेसिक न्यूरो जनरेटिव प्रोसेसेस एंड न्यूरो डी जनरेटिव डिसऑर्डर्स these might be heavy words for students who who do not perhaps have a flair for uh, knowing their own uh, human uh, actions and bodies but neuro degenerative are with the age and neuro comes for brain and neuro generative manje cognitive ani baki sagle disease efficiencies modern culture independent techniques can be used for microbiome analysis be it gut or be it somewhere else on the skin novel therapies targeting microbiome correction may prove effective for neurological disorders like autism alzheimer i could have taken some case studies where people have really shown uh, some kind of reversal in some cases parkinson disease depression schizophrenia among others so i that brings me to the last slide it is not yeah thank you thank you stop the screen sharing ma'am yeah these are the reference yeah no 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 these are the references that i have used and uh, yes i wanted to show you this slide which is not coming and uh, this opens ask the right questions and the nature will open the door to her secret says Uh, the most uh, the most celebrated uh, scientist c v raman sir whose uh, whose birthday is being celebrated so uh, with due respect uh, with highest respect to professor c v raman ask the right questions and the nature will open the door to her secrets this is what the entire essence of this particular talk was and uh, thank you so much for the opportunity uh, i would like to thank the president of uh, the trust dr kursari and uh, i'm sure whatever small mistakes i might have done i, I was conscious of being uh, in front of a surgeon uh, so he can excuse me for that and uh, thank you all uh, dear students and my seniors dr uh, rd joshi the principal of your college 
Dr. Vinkat Hamde, my senior again. These are most respected microbiologists around, and uh, Professor R. V. Kulkarni uh, for being here. I hope uh, we can have a question and answers. Otherwise, goodbye for me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Safalkar, madam, for your uh, very informative and valuable speech on topic psychobiome. Uh, really, it was very interesting. Thank you. And now, I welcome today's president of this function, Honorable Dr. Suresh Khursalai, sir, president of our uh, Yogeshwari Education Society. I request him to conclude and preside over the function. Please, sir. Hello. Yes, sir. Good sir. Good sir. Bola. Hmm. Unmute the link. Kursai, sir, headphone low like a tummy. Punta other device there connect killer set at the Pavos connect the check there. Otherwise, since I was in a day. Tummy unmute a hat. Hello, Kursai, sir. Can you hear me? Sir, you have to unmute your hand. Tell me. Joshi, sir. Hello. Ah, hello. Kursai, sir. I'm sorry to know what you're talking about. Hello. Hello. Ah, hello. 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 Arvi Kulkar. Ha. Kulkar ni sir. Tum chhodna. Aawaz hai toh ek. Saran sir. Ek dar check karta ka connection se kya hai? Arvi sir. Aawaz hai toh ek. Aawaz hai toh na. Aawaz hai toh na. Sare sir. Hello. Aawaz hai toh ek. Hello. Mobile lava sir. Ek minute. Tum to mobile dia. Aawaz hai toh Sanjay Kulkar ni. Ek minute. आये तो आवाज़ बोला मैं परत नहीं उठ के
बोलू दे सर तो आवाज हेलो 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 जोशी सर हाँ ओके तिथु बोलता है यस सर यस सर बोला ऐकू ये मैडम होता है ऐकू ये सर ऐकू ये सर बोला हेलो बोला सर हेलो सर ऐसा है बोला बोलो सर्वप्रथम परम आदरणीय डॉक्टर चंद्रशेखर व्यंकट रामण पुण्य स्मृति अभिवादन करते विज्ञान दिना निमित्ता विज्ञान सप्ताह जो आयोजन कर आज समारोह चर्चा कर विषय मुला विद्या शिक्षक मनामित्ता मे सर्व संयोजक मनापासन आभार मानतो धन्यवाद देतो या निमित्ता ने कहीं मुद्दे मेरा संगावे से भारत मधे स्वतंत्रोत्तर का विशेषतः नवोदी नर का अपन विज्ञा ने दिल्ली अनेक भरपूर दृष्टिकोन मात्र अपन गति ने स्वीकार सत्तर साली इंदिरा गांधी ने जाने घटने मध्य दुरुस्ती कर कलम क्या घटना दृष्टि मध्य समावेश कर वैज्ञानिक दृष्टिकोन कर्तव्या प्रत्येक नागरिक ने वैज्ञानिक वैज्ञानिक प्रसार कर आवश्यक कर्तव्य अंतर्भूत हि गोष अतिशय महत्व की दुसरी महत्व की गोष है कलम नागरिक कर्तव्य है कर्तव्य है शिक्षण मध्य पाजे राजीव गांधी एक शैक्षणिक धोरण जाहिर धोरण मध्य गाभा घटका मध्य वैज्ञानिक दृष्टिकोना प्रसार हे कलम समाविष्ट के अपन सर्व शिक्षण क्षेत्र लोकानी कायम लक्षा पाजे प्रचार अपन वैज्ञानिक दृष्टिकोन वैज्ञानिक दृष्टिकोन खर मे विज्ञान विज्ञान प्रश्न प्रश्न पड़ता विज्ञान कुछ गोषी यथार्थ ज्ञान मिलने विज्ञान यथार्थ ज्ञान मिलने का जो कहीं प्रकार है तो चिकित्से तो निर्माण होते सर्व प्रकार की चिकित्सा जिज्ञासा निरीक्षण अनुमान सर्क अतिशय महत्व देने आवश्यक है शिक्षक ने आने मनसान मुला दड़पण न 
कुठलाही त्यांनी प्रश्न विचारला तर त्या प्रश्नाचं उत्तर देण्याचा प्रयत्न केला पाहिजे नसता त्यांचं जे या ज्या क्षमता त्याच्या वाढायच्या असा अनुमान तर्क निरीक्षण त्या सर्व क्षमता दडपल्या जाण्याचा शक्यता आणि त्याच्यातून वैज्ञानिक दृष्टिकोन निर्माण होत नाही वैज्ञानिक दृष्टिकोनाबद्दल आणखी एक गोष्ट बरेच सांगितले जाते आणि अनेक लोकांना लोकांनी जे वारंवार साळायचा प्रयत्न केला त्यातलं महापुरुषांचं दैवतीकरण महापुरुषांचं दैवतीकरण हे एक आपल्याकडे अतिशय अयवैज्ञानिक गोष्ट आपल्या संस्कृतीमध्ये आहे आणि याचा याचा उल्लेख बाबासाहेब आंबेडकरांनी अनेकदा केलेला आहे की कुठे कुठल्याही परिस्थितीमध्ये महापुरुषांचं दैवतीकरण करून महापुरुष असामान्य असले त्यांच्यात अनेक गुण दैवी असले अनेक गुण अलौकिक असले दैवी म्हणण्यापेक्षा अलौकिक शब्द वापरला पाहिजे तरी त्यांना मर्यादा असतात ती माणसंच असतात आणि माणसं असल्यामुळे त्याच्यात काही गोष्टीच्या मर्यादा आल्यामुळं आपण आपल्याला त्यांच्याकडून सर्व गोष्टी साध्य होतील असा आग्रह धरणं आणि त्यांचं दैवतीकरण करणं या दिशे चुकीचे या दैवतीकरणाच्या आपल्या गुणामुळं अनेक महापुरुषांची चिकित्सा आपण करू शकलेलो नाही आणि चिकित्सा न करता आल्यामुळं त्यांच्या अनेक गोष्टींच्या बद्दल त्या शंका आपल्या मनात त्याच्याबद्दल गैरसमज पसरण्यामध्ये त्याचा परिणाम झालेला दिसून येतो वैज्ञानिक दृष्टिकोनाबद्दल आणखी एक गोष्ट सांगण्यासारखी अशी 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 आहे की धर्म हा नितीशक होतो त्याच्यामुळे धर्माची गरज आहेच आणि विज्ञान हे नीती शिकवत नाही नीती चिकित्सा शिकवत एक प्रकारचा पाखंडी पणा त्याच्यामध्ये असतो असं नसताना खरं म्हणलं तर राईट थिंकिंग इज नेसेसरी टू हॅव राईट कॉन्डक्ट आणि त्याच्यामुळे चांगला विचार व्यवस्थित विचार जो विज्ञानाला अभिप्रेत असतो तशा पद्धतीने विचार केला तरच त्याच्यातून नैतिकता निर्माण होते चांगला विचार आणि नैतिकता त्या दोन्हींचा मिळून विवेक निर्माण होतो आणि विवेकाचे उच्च वर्तन जे असेल काही धार्मिक लोक अतिशय सुस्वभावी आणि अतिशय सदाचारी असतात पण त्याचं कारण त्यांचं त्यांच्या त्या विचारामध्ये असतं असं नाही चांगले विचार चांगल्या आचाराकडे जसे नेतात तसे तसे काही लोकांच्याकडे चांगले विचार नसताना चांगले आचार असू शकतात पण चांगले विचार आणि चांगले विचार हे विज्ञानामुळे शक्य होत आणि चांगले विचार चांगले त्याच्यातून विवेकवादी आचरण निर्माण होऊ शकत हे सर्व विवेक वैज्ञानिक दृष्टिकोनातून निर्माण होणार आहे त्याच्यामुळे याचा प्रचार प्रसार आणि अंगीकार अतिशय महत्वाचा आहे सर्व संयोजकांना या त्यांच्या उपक्रमाबद्दल धन्यवाद देतो आणि मला इथं दोन थैंक यू सर फॉर एक्सप्रेसिंग युअर व्यूज आय एम हम्बल अँड ग्रेटफुल to express here vote of thanks on behalf of yogeshwari mahavidyalaya ambadogai i express my sincere thanks to today's president of the function dr suresh khursale sir for being present and presiding over the function i also express my gratitude to dr shiva athwal sir and dr sushma safalkar madam for their special guidance on this occasion of the national science day i express my sincere thanks today's function uh vas sir our secretary lomte sir our treasurer and joint secretary dr bhima shankar shete sir for their being presence principal of the college dr rd joshi and all members of organizing committee and all host co-host and participants for making this event 
very successful. Thank you all once again. On behalf of president of this function, I declare here that the function is over now. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, sir. Sir, uh, I request all the participants, those who have attended this webinar, for them, I have pasted the feedback link. I have shared the feedback link for the certificate, e-certificate, which is provided by the college. So I request all the participants, the feedback link is provided to you in the chat box as well as on the YouTube. So please feel free to fill the feedback form. Stay with us. Thank you. Thank you. Feedback colleague, uh, just uh, make it note, the feedback link will be open for one hour. So please uh, fill that form within a time. Thank you from Produce Edutech Services. Thank you, Ambe Zogai College, for giving us this opportunity. Thank you very much, sir. Okay. Right now, sir.